Father, we uh, come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. We come today to worship you. We come on this, uh, another Lord's Day, a few weeks after the resurrection of Christ from the dead. We come on this special day, Mother's Day, where we recognize our mothers and the Christian family, the Christian home. And so, Lord, as we worship you today, we give all our attention to you, Lord, and we want you to be blessed by our worship. And Father, we want to be revived as we worship you. Revive our hearts, revive our spirits. And Father, we pray that you'll do a mighty work within our midst, whether we be here at New Life or at home. Lord, wherever we are, touch our hearts anew and afresh. And now in these quiet moments, hear our personal prayer. And now, Father, hear us as we pray the prayer that Christ taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation. 
people. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. stars I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul my Savior God to thee Sparing sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burdens gladly bearing, he bled and died to take. Away my sin, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee.
Our scripture lesson for this morning is taken from 1 Peter, the third chapter, beginning with the first six verses. I just want to say as I read the scripture, I know it's Mother's Day, and I don't want any of you ladies to get mad at the scripture. I didn't write it. I'm just reading it. Hear the word of God. Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands, so that any of them who do not believe the word, that they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. When they see the purity and the reverence of your lives, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past, who put their hope in God, used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters, if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. All those who know that this is the word of God say amen. Amen, amen and amen. Our prayer list is printed in the bulletin if you'll turn with me and I can update you. Um, <clears throat> we're getting back to the weekly uh, bulletin so it's a little more accurate. Um, we're remembering Dee, Dee Brown and the loss of her cousin um, David so we want to continue to pray for her. Um, Marianne Burton, who I told her I'd wave to her, hi Marianne, um, usually sits right there, um, had knee replacement surgery on Monday and is, has been doing well. Talked to her yesterday and uh, it wasn't the better days. You know, you have ups and downs with this thing. And so um, Marianne, we're praying for you and we'll continue to do that. And of course, we want you to remember to all of those on the list uh, that we've been praying for, I'd like to share with you. Uh, Gladys Cameron, who is, um, was in the old Adelbert. It's called, I always forget what they changed the name. Oxford. Oxford. They change every name around here. I never know whether I'm coming or going. The Oxford <laughs> Rehab. Uh, she'd been there for a couple of years. She used to sing in the choir, and she's still there, uh, but... Um, She's quarantined for COVID. So we want to remember to play, pray for, for Gladys. We've added a friend of Lois Sourman, Christopher O'Neill with cancer. So we want to remember in our prayers and remember the rest of those on our list. Continue to keep praying for them at this time. Our prayer course is, O oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I see. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We come in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, our Savior. Father, we come to worship you, and it's been a few weeks past the resurrection of Christ from the dead. But Lord, we continue to worship you on this special day. 
And so, Father, as we lift your name on high, as we praise the name of Jesus, we pray that you'll be blessed by our worship. Father, we confess our sin. You're faithful, you're just, and you forgive us our sins. You cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, Lord, as we are forgiven people, we rejoice in that forgiveness. And Lord, we worship today not out of guilt, not out of obligation. We just are here today because we love you and you've forgiven us. And Father, we try to walk with you daily. And so God, it's been a real privilege, these, especially in these weeks of Lent, leading up to Easter, and now these weeks after, to worship you. Father, we come especially today because it's Mother's Day. What a grand day it is. What a special day it is. It's good to worship with family, with friends, whether we be here or at our home. Lord, it's, we feel your mighty power and your presence. Because God, we know the most important thing that we can do in life is to worship you. The most important thing that we can do in life is to worship with our family. Father, when other things interfere, we're thankful that you're patient with us one more time and we do gather for worship. Lord, we wanna thank you for your provisions. You provide us with our daily bread. You provide us with our housing our clothing, with our educations, with our jobs, with our family, with our friends, with our church. Lord, what, what more could we ask for? You provided us where, with a country where we're free. We don't always like everything, but Father, we're free. We pray that you would continue to be with us in these days. We pray for the United States of America. We pray that we would be drawn closer to you, that the decisions we make would be drawn closer to you. Lord, we would worship you in a much freer way than our citizens do. Draw us to you, Father. Send revival to our land. Lord, we pray for those across the globe that are in agony, those that are starving, those that are homeless, those that are living in fear. We pray for those in the Ukraine, Lord. We, we pray that a miracle would happen in that country. We pray for the Russian. We know some of them are victims also. We pray for their families. We pray, Father, for those that try to run our world, those dictators that are merciless dictators that are killers we pray that their hearts would be changed and softened and that somehow someone would tell them about Jesus Christ Father you are a wonderful God Lord you've blessed us richly and we thank you so very much we each come with different prayer concerns and needs Father we especially pray for those that we've been praying for we pray for Dee Brown as she goes through the loss of her cousin. We pray that she would feel your peace. We pray for Mary Ann Burton, that you would be with her and heal her knee and get her back doing the things she wants to do once again. We pray for Gladys Cameron, Lord, that you would touch her and heal her body at this time. We pray for Christopher, that you would touch him and heal him of his cancer. And Lord, the others on our list and those on our special concerns and those who have lost loved ones in the last five months, we pray that they would feel your power and your spirit. Lord, use us in these days. Help us to remember what happened with the empty tomb and help us to be real missionaries uh, for Jesus Christ. We love you and we worship you. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. And his people said, Amen and Amen. 
Well, today is Mother's Day. It's a special day, and we like to always recognize mothers in a special way. And we usually try to do something different with music and some other things that we do. And so um, we've had another special group fly in all the way from Nashville um, to share the message with us. Only first I have to pick them out of the audience. Um, and so I need some uh, volunteers from our congregation. So John Karsnitz would love to be one, wouldn't you? Um, John, it's good to see you. They're here half the time in Florida, the other half of the time. Uh, Bonnie will show you where to go. Um, how about um, how about we go right on back there, Ollie? Um, are you willing to come on up? What can I tell you? It's good pay. Okay. Uh, and how about Dennis? Would you come up and help us out today? on this Mother's Day. And uh, how about uh, we take from the Fiore row, David, for would you like to come up and help us out? And since they're visiting today, why don't you bring your son along with you, okay? I know the ones that don't want to be picked because you're looking at your feet. So I'm, try, I'm trying to do this fairly. I know if you have a back problem, you can't stand long. And how many do we have? One, two, three, five. Um, so we need three more. Um, and I think Dick Estelo, you look like you're dying to get up here. What do you think, Dick? Come on up. How about Jim Brees, Jim? We need one more. Do we need one more? <laughs> one, two, seven. And Fred Thomas always is a good sport, okay? <laughs> Come on. Once you hit 90 years old, okay, Fred? So you're doing great. Now, they've actually been practicing for months. We told them it was Mother's Day coming up. They've been practicing for months, and here they are. Do we have enough room for everybody? Can't get up. You know, the difficult time was I called people up because I don't know everything about everybody, and I try, if I think you have a bad back or something, I don't call you. I called someone up, and uh, they were colorblind. Well, I didn't know that. And they rang quite well, they told me afterwards. So I thank you all for being such good sports. <laughs> okay, are they ready, Miss Bond?
and I think if you really want to hear it, they have an encore. Would you like to hear it? <laughs> Did a great job, didn't they? Months of practice. <laughs> this is in honor and memory of our mothers. Always like to share with a few little stories about mothers. There was a cartoon in the Saturday Evening Post that showed a young boy. He was about uh, five or six years old and he was talking on the telephone and he was saying to his friend, my mom is in the hospital. The twins and Roxy and Billy and Sally and the dog and me and dad, we are home all alone. <laughs> there was a mother and she was concerned about her only son going off to college. So she wrote, this letter to the college president. Dear sir, my son has been accepted for admission to your college and soon he will be leaving me. I'm writing to ask you that you give personal attention to the selection of his roommate. I want to be sure that his roommate is not the kind of person who uses foul language or tells off color jokes, who smokes, drinks, or chases after the girls. I hope you'll understand why I am appealing to you directly. You see, this is the first time my son will be away from home, except for his three years in the Marine Corps. <laughs> that was a good one, wasn't it? <laughs> A little boy was talking to his little girlfriend next door, and he says to her, I wonder why my, what my mother would like for Mother's Day. And the girl answered, well, you could promise to keep your room clean and orderly. You could go to bed as soon as she calls you. You could brush your teeth after eating. You could quit fighting with your brothers and sisters, especially at the dinner table. The boy looked at the girl and said, no, I mean something practical. <laughs> anyway, I want to tell you sort of why God made mothers. By the time the Lord made mothers, he was in a sixth day of working overtime. An angel appeared to God and said, why are you spending so much time on this one? The Lord answered and said, 
Have you seen the spec sheet on her? She has to be completely washable, but not plastic. Have 200 movable parts, all replaceable. Run on black coffee and leftovers. Have a lap that can hold three children at one time and that disappears when she stands up. Have a kiss that can cure anything from a scraped knee to a broken heart and have six pairs of hands. The angel was astounded at the requirements for this one. Six pairs of hands, no way, said the angel. The Lord replied, oh, it's not the hands that are the problem. It's the three pairs of eyes the mothers must have. And that's just on the standard model, the angel asked. The Lord nodded in agreement. Yep, one pair of eyes are to th see through the closed door as she asks her children what they're doing, even though she already knows. Another pair in the back of her head are to see what she needs to know, even though no one thinks she can. And the third pair are here in the front of her head. They are for looking at an errant child and saying that she understands and loves him or her without even saying a single word. The angel tried to stop the Lord. This is too much work for one day. Wait until tomorrow to finish. But I can't, the Lord protested. I am so close to finishing this creation that is so close to my heart. She already heals herself when she's sick and can feed a family of six on a pound of hamburger and can get a nine-year-old to stand in the shower. The angel moved closer and touched the woman. But you've made her so soft, Lord. She's soft, the Lord agreed. But I've also made her tough. You have no idea what she can endure or accomplish. Will she be able to think, asked the angel. The Lord replied, not only will she be able to think, she'll be able to reason and negotiate. The angel then noticed something and reached out and touched the woman's cheek. Oops, it looks like you have a leak in this model. I told you that you were trying to put too much into one day, Lord. This is not a leak, the Lord objected. That's a tear. What's a tear for, the angel asked. The Lord said, the tear is her way of expressing her joy, her sorrow, her disappointment, her pain, her loneliness, her grief, and her pride. And the angel was impressed. You are a genius, Lord. You thought of everything, for mothers are truly amazing. Amen and amen, amen. Well, Mother's Day is an odd day because some of us are rejoicing and happy because we're sitting with our mothers or our mothers are living. And some of us are still rejoicing, but a little sad um, because our mothers are already gone and we know they're with the Heavenly Father. Um, but no matter how you look at it, whether our mothers are with us or gone, whether we've had difficult family lives or good family lives, I think at some point we've all had special memories. And so we rejoice that we can have those special memories today. Maybe your relationship with your mom, you're still going through some healing. Well, God does heal all wounds. And so God is good to us on this special Mother's Day. Um, we usually buy you something for a Mother's Day gift for all the ladies in the church, all the women. Um, but, you know, with the pandemic, we got all these catalogs of all these beautiful things in pink for ladies to a godly mother, to a godly woman, uh, a woman of faith. But most of them wouldn't be delivered to us till after Mother's Day. So that put us in a little quandary of what to do. So what we did this year is uh, we just went through our bookstore and we picked out some product. 
And so your Mother's Day gift today is after church. Um, just come up and take your own gift. If it's little, take two. If it's real little, I know some of you already have a shopping bag or are ready to go. We were going to have you come pick it out during the service, but we figured we'd never get out of here on time uh, because of um, the debating. And um, I would just like this section during this sermon to not concentrate on the table, to look up this way. And then following the service, you're welcome to take a gift home. And, you know, you might say, oh, I don't really need a gift. It's a sign of our love to you as a mother, woman, a female. So we want you to take something home. We want you to take it home. What do we have here? We have a little bit of everything from spiritual to not spiritual. We even have, I think there's one left, two, two left. Um, it's a very practical gift. It's wrapped up toilet paper with a little spray in it. It's called poopery. And uh, so I want you to know when I go <laughs> traveling, I keep one in my suitcase at all times in case the hotel doesn't stock the bathroom well. But there's two of those left. Um, but then there, there's a, a multitude of things. So we invite you afterwards uh, uh, to come up and, and most certainly help yourself. And we wish you a blessed Mother's Day, a very special Mother's Day. And if you're going out to eat with family or friends, that your whole fellowship um, glorifies the Heavenly Father. And uh, we're glad that your lives have touched all of our lives here. Um, amen and amen. So do you think you know everybody? Let's stand and greet each other as we sing, and I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King. And I love you with the love of the Lord. seated we ask that you sign the ritual of christian friendship uh the pad that the ushers have passed out let us know that you're worshiping with us today just to highlight a few activities for you in the life of the church we want to remind you that we're not showing the chosen tonight um so don't come tonight um we trust that you're maybe doing some family things but we'll show the third uh, video next sunday night and next Sunday night is going to be a special um, raffle Sunday night. No charge for the raffle. We'll call, put your names in your hat, and you'll get to take home souvenir prizes concerning uh, the chosen. We trust that you've been enjoying it. We have it on closed caption now. And uh, remember, the refreshments are free, and it's what you get at the movie theater, hot dogs, uh, sauerkraut chili tacos chips whatever ice cream it's all free we send you home on a sugar high um but we've had a great time 69 one week 70 the next and it's been good fellowship and uh, we're doing this especially since our wednesday nights aren't starting till the fall so it's good to get together again besides it's just sunday morning so um that is uh please note tonight we're not meeting and then Tuesday, of course, is our men's prayer and Bible study. Um, and then Tuesday at 10 a.m., our ladies' Bible study, still working on uh, the book of Revelation. So, ladies, you can come and be a part of that. 
a choir rehearsal on Thursday. And of course, you can see the office and the bookstores open every day till three. So we're, we're slowly getting back into, into the swing of things. I want to remind you um, that if you're buying something for your mother, just mention that at the cashier at the bookstore and you get 50% off. And um, I would tell you if you haven't gotten it yet, there's a table up here. Maybe you can find something for her um, and uh, you'll be forgiven. Um, we, um, we ended the bakeless bake sale. You remember that? Are any of you still waiting for your pastries to come out? Well, you're going to lose weight because this is one of those bake sales where you pay what it costs, but you get nothing except a blessing. So... We got, I got a little under $4,000, so we matched that and have sent $4,000 to Samaritan's Purse uh, to help those in Ukraine. Um, and so we figured every little bit helps um, to help those people in their crisis situation. So we've sent that, that onward. And I think that brings us up to everything. What do you think? This time you have the privilege of presenting unto the Heavenly Father his tithes and your offerings. Our Father and our God, thank you for the joy of giving. Bless the gift and the gift for our life today that our giving may be used to spread the kingdom of Jesus Christ around the world. In his name we pray. Amen. from whom all blessings flow.
Well, it is, today is Mother's Day, and as I said, a Mother's Day is sometimes hard uh, because some of us are sad, and some of us are happy. Some of us are might have unresolved issues, and some of us might be thrilled even though our mothers are gone because we know where they are, we know what they're doing right now. Um, I hope I don't say anything wrong because I'm like sort of not made for this world and sometimes I'm uh, totally politically incorrect in everything I say. Uh, but <laughs> um, when I think of Mother's Day, uh, I think of uh, women. I think of uh, beautiful women that are very special. I think of a special type of, of woman. And I can define woman maybe where some of our politicians can. But I, I always especially think of, of a beautiful woman. And I would say here today as, as we gather that every person in this room wants to be beautiful today. And I know you men, maybe you don't like the word beautiful for you, but I've got a bunch of people here today that either want to be beautiful or studly. And I can show you how to be that way. And by the time we leave this room in the next 23 minutes or something, you will all be beautiful. And you will all be, if you masculine, you want to use the word studly, you can leave this place a studly place, and I'm going to tell you how to do it. It's that simple. But most of us want to be beautiful, whether we're from the age 16 to 70 to 80 to 90. Most of us want to be beautiful whether we're single or we're married, don't we? And I think that ambition to look good, to look great, is commendable. I've told you before, and I've told you that many times, that I eat out a lot. I always eat out. I never eat at home. And um, I'm pretty good when I go to eat out. I'm nice to the wait staff. I take care of them when they're good and uh, sort of have a good relationship. But I guess in this week, because I'm thinking about Mother's Day and beautiful, I'm noticing how ugly people are. I said to Bonnie the other day, have you noticed how ugly the world's getting? They're just ugly. You know why they're ugly? Because nobody seems to care about what they look like. You know, come on. I don't want to sit next to you when I'm paying for a meal if you're in your pajamas and I don't even know your name. Now, that's a real basic thing. Now, you could say, well, Norman, you're an old fuddy-duddy. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I, I would like it if I sat next to you and you at least combed your hair. I would like it, and I have no preference if you want piercings and tattoos. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's fine, but it's getting to the point that I think we're out of control. We, we just don't care. We just do what we want to do. We don't care. We don't care what we wear. You know, it's like, I was thinking the other day, you know, I would think people would like to look beautiful. You might say to me, well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. By the time you leave today, I'll tell you what beauty is. You will know what beauty is, I promise you. But it seems that people don't care like they used to. Well, there are three ways to become beautiful, and I'm going to tell you what they are, okay? Now, I'll just tell you. Number one. We are sometimes born beautiful. You ever notice that? 
Some people are just born beautiful. The baby is as cute as all get out. And then the little kid. I, I was out twice this week. And, uh, I was at Sam's Club, and this little boy and little girl were in the carts with the parents. And we did this thing where we went down the one aisle, and they were down. We were all, always bumping into each other. And uh, both the little boy and the little girl were so cute. I usually don't speak to children. But when I'm in a scooter, because I'm crippled, and um, I'm on the same level as a little boy sitting in the chair, and our eyeballs meet, I'm like, uh, oh, hey, he's so cute. His name was Lance. And, and uh, some people just get a good start, don't they? Sarah in the Bible. Esther in the Bible, the lover in the Song of Solomon. Some people just happen to be born beautiful, and they grow up to be beautiful. You know, not like me. I never thought I was really that studly growing up in high school and junior high, you know. I had buck teeth, so I had to wear braces. And when I was a kid, the braces were those silver things that went around your teeth. Now it's very fashionable to wear braces, multicolored, plastic, you know, everything. I had, you know, where they call you tinsel teeth as a joke. You know, I always had to shop for my clothes in the boys' husky department. That was a disgusting department to have to go to all the time. My mother would say to me, we have to go to the huskies. Thanks, Mom. Um, no, I, I always felt like, you know, I told you before I used to get pimples. I'm telling you, every Christmas, the biggest one was on my nose, and they used to call me Rudolph. I was like, I didn't have that beautiful head start like some people do. And I don't know if you've ever seen the show Seinfeld. Have you ever seen? There's one... Um, show they do on the ugly baby and uh, uh, Seinfeld and his friends go up to visit friends who just had a baby and they all look at the same time in the crib and the baby is so ugly. They're all holding back from screaming, laughing. It's the funniest episode, ugly baby. Um, Cause some people just don't have the head start to be born beautiful. But yet some are. And they're born very beautiful. And that can be a big disadvantage growing up. You know, beauty can work against you sometimes. There's the fine line when you become even more beautiful between that and conceitedness. Sometimes... As you are, start out beautiful and get older, and that beauty tends to go away, it worries you. You sometimes give people false impressions when you're the most beautiful people in this high school in all the world. Because they think you're always happy. Sometimes people think you're less intelligent when you're beautiful. You know, sometimes beauty works against you. But let me tell you, I will tell you this. Some people just seem to get a head start with being beautiful. <laughs> okay, a second way you can be beautiful. If you don't think you got a big enough head start, guess what you could do? You can buy beauty. Have you ever heard of that before in your entire life? You can actually buy beauty. A Gropen study that's pretty been pretty recent... Um, did an official account with 2,000 Americans, and I want to tell you some of the results. Women surveyed, 2,000 of them, said they routine, routinely spend money on their appearance, spend an average of $3,756 a year on their appearance. Comes down to $313 a month, which adds up to... $225,360 in a lifetime spent on making ladies beautiful. So, husbands, I'm here today to tell you, you can't afford your wife, let me tell you. The men, their survey, they're not so bad. Um, 
they average $2,928 a year, $244 a month, um, about $175,000 in a lifetime to look good. And um, so they are less than 22%, approximately less uh, than women. So there is no question that we can buy beauty. The average person today spends this much on beauty products. Um, creams, lotions, anti-aging moisture cream, $57 a month. Makeup beauty products, $58 a month. Hair products, $58 a month. And going to the gym or classes, $106 a month. A recent study of 4,000 women now, let's see if this is accurate, ladies. 4,000 women did a study, and there's an average, these women average 40 products of beauty in their bathroom or their bedroom. 40 products. Do you come up to that, you, you think? That, that would be easy to do, wouldn't you, wouldn't you think so? Well, so this week I've been thinking about beauty, and so... You know, I have this doctor in front of my name, so everybody thinks I'm like a real doctor. Well, I'm a doctor of ministry, um, but I get all these ads all the time, and one of them is I can get cheap magazines because they think I have a waiting room. So I get these monthly, you know, I get a magazine that you pay $85, $90 for in the year for 10 bucks. So anyway, so one of the magazines I get is People. I like to keep up on the world, you know. And so um, I was thinking of beauty and ugly this week. And I got out my People magazine came and um, goes to show you can be as beautiful as you want to be, but if you have health problems, whether they be physical or mental. So Naomi Judd is on the cover, who I think is quite, quite attractive. And so I started looking through. Then, you know, we just don't buy beauty with our makeup and stuff. So this um, is, and I'm not up on people, this was um, Katy Perry. So I think the first service told me she's a singer. Is she a singer or something? So here's her pictures from 2012 to 2021. Um, how she's changed and what she's looked like. You probably have similar pictures of yourself at home in your bedroom, I'm sure. But I'm <laughs> looking at this lady. The dresses alone and the makeup, it's probably absolutely shocking um, how she's changed and the money she's invested in herself. So that's Katy Perry. So then I kept looking through this. Mag this is the most I've read this magazine. You know what I usually do? I usually go to the back. I love those where there's two pictures and there's 10 things different of e in each picture. That's what I live for in this magazine. So here, perfectly fit into the sermon. The coolest new beauty products. <laughs> and there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them on this page. Uh, so I wanna see if any of you ladies own these. Um, First one, this is Skin Smoother, Common Air, it's called, and um, $88 for 60 capsules. And then we go from this to um, another high-tech thing. I'm not too sure what it does. And then we go to uh, Nourishing Toner. And then we go to some pink thing for $39. And then we go to a smart tool for $25 and firming cream for $23. You can buy beauty, and that's nothing new. They bought beauty in biblical days. They bought beauty in cowboy days. And we buy beauty today. We think we're not good enough. We think we don't look good enough. So we buy beauty. Many of you know, I watch Fox News 
pretty religiously. And most of the girls on Fox News really, as far as beauty products, have gone over the edge as far as I'm concerned. Um, but Americans spend billions on hair, skin, teeth, lips. This thing that's come out in the last few years called Botox, you can have a skinny face and I can see you the next day and your lips are twice the size. I don't know why you do that. Buying beauty is expensive, it's superficial, and fads change. So you can be born beautiful, you can buy beauty, or now I'm going to tell you how we're all going to be beautiful, if you're not all mad at me up to this point. You can become beautiful. You can become beautiful. I don't care where you've started. I don't care how much money you have or don't have. You can become beautiful. You see, beauty, even in the scriptures, we see here Peter saying, it's something that comes from within. It's something that comes up from your heart. Your beauty just doesn't come from what you can buy and how we can fix ourselves up or make us manly or studly. You can't be born with real beauty. You can't buy real beauty. You become beautiful. Ladies, you become beautiful. Men, there can be a beauty about your manliness that you become. You just can't buy it. A fourth grade teacher assigned students to write an essay. It began with, my mother is. And consistently, those fourth graders, you know what they said? My mother is beautiful. Because those kids saw their mothers beautiful. Always joke with you about my mother and I, I, I mentioned it the other day that uh, you know we had mirrors in the house and my, my mother just was she wouldn't look in the mirror she'd buy the mirrors for the uh, colonial look the frame that was around the mirror but she, she she wouldn't look in it she said I don't like to look at myself and I think back of my mother and you know what I think I think she was beautiful and I miss her. But she was beautiful. She was beautiful because she was fun. She loved me. She cared for our family. She worked hard. She was just absolutely beautiful. You know, I often look back on the last years of her life. She had the bone test that she was an 80-year-old with the bone strength of a 50-year-old. So she would fall all the time and never break anything. So I'd be at the church here, and she'd be in Center City where we live. She'd call and say, Norman, she's, this happened three or four times. <laughs> I'm on the floor. I fell. I said, Mom, are you okay? Yes, don't come home right now. Uh, I'll be okay. She said, I crawled to the phone. So she said, I just don't want you to be in shock when you come in and see me on the floor. I said, well, Mom, I'm leaving right now. No, don't bother. I said, well, Mom, I wouldn't leave for four or five hours. You're not going to lay on the floor. So I'd run down, get there. She'd be there. This happened to us numerous times. I had a, time, a hard time picking her up because I would straddle her, and I would pull her and get her up, and she'd start laughing. And she'd get me laughing, and she'd pull me down on top of her. And I'd say, Mom, you've got to stop laughing. We've got to do this all over again. And so there we go. We were like rocking horse up and down. Happened to us once going to Will's Eye Hospital. It was icy. She had just had a cataract removed the day before. We went back. I said, Mom, hold on to my hand. So, you know, uh, in the pavements, how they have the little ramp. I don't want you to slip on the ramp. So... Down she went, down I went, there we were on Walnut Street in an icy uh, road. 
laying on top of each other, and my mother would start laughing. I'd say, Mom, stop laughing. I can't get up if you keep laughing. My mother was beautiful. And you know how every one of us in this room can be beautiful or studly or manly? I'm going to tell you, this is the part you need to listen to. So wake up now, and then you can go back to sleep. The reality is we become beautiful when we become born again. When we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has passed away. The new has come. Now Christ won't change your nose. He won't change your figure. He can, but... He changes our inner being. And when our inner being is changed, we radiate the beauty of the Christian faith and Jesus Christ. I have told you the story. I'll be brief. Remember the girl? I went on a witness team, and uh, we were giving our witness at a Sunday night service in another state, and we used to travel all the time from Asbury doing this. And so... Um, I was in charge of the team, gave my testimony. The other kids gave the testimony. We sang, and there was this girl sitting right down there and had a huge scar in her face from her eye all the way down. And I, I could see that scar. Anybody could see the scar. And when the service was over, I gave an invitation to come forward to accept Christ. She came forward. I went down to pray with her and kneel with her. And um, she looked at me and said, I want what you have. I want what you have. I said, you can have it. Prayed with her to accept Christ. Um, she said, I have problems reading the Bible. I had just, I, I shared this story with you before. Saved my money to buy a brand new Bible that week was a parallel Bible, King James, NIV, four version. And she said, I can't understand. I said, well, look, I have this Bible here. You'll understand this. It's got four versions in it, so why don't you take it? She said, I can have this? I said, yes. And she looked at me and said, I've never felt so good. And I looked at her, and you know, and I'm telling you, the scar disappeared because when you see Jesus Christ radiate from somebody's life, beauty takes over. Beauty takes over. You know people that Christ isn't in charge of their life. They're usually miserable. They're usually cranky. They're usually people you don't want to go bowling with. You know these people. You know these people. But when Christ comes into your life, you're beautiful. As we leave today, Christ is in each one of our lives. The beauty of Christianity should radiate from us. And what are some of the qualities of beauty? First Peter, reverence, godliness, chastity, faithfulness a gentle and quiet spirit, a gentle and quiet spirit. You know, this beauty can never fade when we accept Christ and we grow and develop our faith. And I'm telling you, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I've known lots of Christians in my life that when they've come up, you just want to be with them. And then you know lots of probably professed believers that you don't care if you're ever with again in your entire life. <laughs> They're called church people. True Christianity, accepting Christ, makes you beautiful. I think that's one of the reasons why my mom was beautiful. You know, she had a personal relationship with Christ. 
she prayed every night on her knees and read her Bible, and I used to go in her bedroom and watch her. Moms, those of you that aren't moms, dads, it's you, those of you that aren't dads, do you know how important it is that you live out your faith right now? Oh, it was another little tough week for us this week because of, um, you saw in the news, the mom that killed her two sons, shot them in Upper Makefield, and uh, I assume they're deceased now. They were waiting to give their organs away. I don't know, the one, well, went to Newtown Middle School and nine years old, well, One of the little guys went to our preschool. And do you know how important it is for moms and dads and churches and Christians to live their Christian life and be beautiful people? Beautiful people. So some of you have your moms with you. I want to tell you a few things you can do for her. Number one, treat her with respect, even if you disagree. Number two, show her gratitude for the things that she's done for you. Number three, live a life that she can be proud of. Number four, take time for her, especially as she grows older. And number five, something we always did in my family. Let her know that you love her. We never left the house or hung up from a phone call without saying to any one of my family members, love you, love you, love you. You can leave this church today beautiful. You can leave this church today something, oh, he's a wacko. I don't really care because you're wrong. You can just leave this church today and not think twice about anything. But I'm telling you, you can leave this church today a beautiful person if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if he lives in your heart and you work and develop that relationship. Don't let much time go by without making that special commitment about seeing me. If you, I'll be glad to pray with you at any time any time of the day. But let me tell you, happy Mother's Day. And if you're not a mother, happy Mother's Day. And if you're a man, I'm not confused. I'm just telling you this. Happy Mother's Day. Amen and amen. Let's sing our closing hymn, Find Us Faithful. <laughs> Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe. And the lives we live inspire them to Let's have all the ladies sing. Oh, may all the ladies the footprints that we Everybody, let's sing it. Everybody. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe. And the lives we live.
want to tell you that if you want to be beautiful, I'm going to show you two books you can read, and you pick the one that you like. You can read people, <laughs> or you can read the Word of God. Amen. amen. And amen. I hope you have a great Mother's Day, and uh, it's always an honor to be here to talk to you on a day like this. And you get to take some gifts home. So I'll take one, take two. Our goal is we wouldn't mind emptying the table because then we have to put everything back. So just enjoy yourself, okay? Amen. Go with the blessing of God. Devotion, light your way. 